Hey guys, Anthony here with Advanced Vector. Today bringing you another installment of my Proxmox and Ceph cluster. Uh, I'm doing an update here. I am upgrading my drives from 600 gig SAS drives to two terabyte SAS drives. I just really needed some more storage. I kind of uh, had a FreeNAS cluster that I was going on the side, but I really wanted to bring all that data up into the same place in my Ceph uh, cluster. So I had started that and got to the point where I was very, very, very full um, I, I was able to make it fit just barely, um, but it was, uh, you know, I was getting alerts and, and whatnot, so I decided a, a, an upgrade uh, was in order for the drive. So uh, what you may notice that's a little bit different is each one of my nodes now did have six drives. Um, before I started this process, I had uh, several months ago even um, upgraded all my drives to 600 gig drives. So I had 18 600 gig drives total um, with my replication set at two, um, you know, that was actually giving me about four and a half or four gig or four terabytes of storage, excuse me. Um, and so that was okay until I wanted to migrate everything off of my FreeNAS server, um, which had previously hosted all my pictures and media and stuff like that um, onto this Ceph back storage that just is going to roll up under a VM. Um, so I, I made the transition and it was again, like I it mentioned, just very, very full. So I, I knew that I needed to get bigger uh, hard drives. One of the other things that I also kind of uh, did before we get into what I'm doing now is previously four of the OSDs were under one NVMe. I did swap it out so that each OSD, or I should say each NVMe drive that's running that database in the wall drive uh, device for these is only um, responsible for three OSDs per. And that's because if a wall device or DB device does fail, you actually lose the, any OSDs that are underneath that. So I wanted to be in a situation where it was as distributed as possible um, and and so I did make that change. So now we can see I had to fiddle around with some things. It was a little dicey, um, but I got my cluster back up to the point where I have plenty of space. We can see over here, um, and I still you know have some upgrading to do. So I paused at this point in particular um, because this is a lengthy process. I have been working on this upgrade now for about three and a half days, um, and you've kind of got to you know take stuff out. Um, it, you, you mark it out and then down, and then you can remove it. Then you replace the disks, you know, uh, format them to be OSDs in the cluster, and then the data will start migrating on there, and it'll start to, to reweight and balance that data across all of your drives and whatnot. So it is kind of a lengthy process. Um, I had originally gone through, just because of the way things were with the, the way the data was and how full I was, I kind of did two... Um, OSDs on each of my nodes first, so I upgraded um, two of them uh, on each one. That gave me kind of enough extra space that I was able to go through now, and what I had done after that is uh, the other four on those. So when you mark a node out, or I should say when you mark an OSD out, what it wants to do is it moves all of the data off of that into other places, basically saying, hey, you know what, this isn't going to be part of this um, pool anymore or this, this Ceph cluster, so you need to move everything off of it to a different storage device or location. Um, and so that's what I've done here. Um, and it takes uh, a, a while for these to um, basically get to this 0% used, right? Um and so once once you get down to the point where you can kind of look at your step your Ceph cluster over here, and we can see I'm doing some scrubbing and stuff like that. But you'll you'll see when you mark these down, and I'll and I'll do it here in just a second that a lot of this opens up and goes red, and it'll say, hey, you know, we're making copies. Basically, we're moving data around. Um, and so I would wait until all all of this is completely green. Um, before I mark these down and start moving them and destroying them. So we're going to kind of start um, with this top one now, and we'll move down to this. We can kind of do it in order. So when you want to do an upgrade, or even if you just need to replace a drive, um, what you'll do is you can kind of just click on it, and then you'll you'll basically, as simple as that, you'll mark it out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I know I have enough space to uh, to handle the rest of this. So we're going to go ahead and mark all four of these. Um, 600 gig SASs as out. So, and then we'll jump over here, and you can see, just like I was telling you, so I marked all those out, and now you can see, hey, look, we have reduced uh, data availability. Um, now that it knows that, hey, 
uh, it, it showed the reduced data availability. It kind of calculated what it had. It said, okay, these are just out. They're not completely down, so I can still pull the data off of them. And we kind of get this point here where now it's trying to remap. It's backfilling. You know, it's, it's like, again, moving those placement groups to disks that aren't marked out. The other thing that I want to uh, point out here is we can now see that the reweight for these is set to zero. And basically, you could do this manually um, without marking them out. But basically, what that does is it says, hey, I don't want these to be used at all, right? You can see everything else is set at one, and this kind of has to, to do with, we have the rate, the weight over here, and then the real weight. So right now my weights are all a, a lot bigger. When I'm done with it, they'll all be the same. But when I had first plugged this first one in, I had had a mix of different drive sizes, right? And so that's kind of what this is, is it's that calculation between, hey, one of my drives or some of my drives are bigger than others, and so data needs to be distributed across the cluster a little differently. Optimally, um, your, your drive would all be the same size which mine will be eventually um, and so you know that would be uh, set to one or or they would all be set to the same priority so that your data is distributed evenly across your devices so um, that's that now so let's say all of the data uh, had migrated off of these like we see down here um, once you know once your your circle over here is completely green again um, what you'll do is and I've already done it for these but it's a real simple um, you can you can select them and you can just hit stop and so that's what actually puts it in that down state and once it's down it's out it's not um, doing anything in fact if we come to our monitoring here we can see um, that I have four out and three down um, with a total of 17, I'd actually already removed one prior and I thought, hey, you know what, I'm going to make a quick video on this. So anyways, um, so once they're down and out, you're sure the data has been migrated and moved over. Um, you just come over here to this more. You can hit destroy. I like to clean up the disks so that if I decide to use them for something else, I don't have any lingering OSD configuration on there. Um, basically, just so you can plug it into another system or server and uh, you'll be good to go. So this does take a few minutes. Um, and we can see it's kind of doing all this stuff here in the, in the background. All right, so now those are removed, um, and I haven't physically removed them from the server yet. So now we can see that they're all still showing up here. Um, they do they do show up as these Ceph devices, um, but we can clear those out, and we actually um, are going to clear those out uh, just. To make sure okay so 15 and 18 oh actually i gotta make sure i'm looking at the right vm here so let's go to the vm2 discs um don't want to do anything too crazy here and there we go okay yeah so now we can see these are out these should be cleared if i pop these in a new server they'll show up as just kind of unformatted drives we can do whatever we want with them so uh what i need to do now is pull these out replace them um and then basically bring them back in and I bring them back in the exact same way guys um, that I did in my last video we will kind of go over that again though just in case you guys missed that last video alright so I have just replaced um, all of these drives physically in the machine and if I reload this all right, so now we can see that they are all uh, the terabyte, the two terabyte drives that are in there, which is fantastic. Now, the other thing that I want to check here, and we can see, so the NVMe 0N1 only has two LVs on it, which means that it is backing two of my uh, physical disks. So I can add one more to this one, and then I will need to add the other three to the uh, NVMe 1 and 1 and we will go ahead and do that now all right guys so here it is we can see um, it is the exact same command that I used in my previous video but uh, if you missed that one here is what it is and this allows you to basically designate that NVMe drive um, as the DB device uh, the only change from last time to this time is I'm using a little bit more space. Um, last time I used 20 gigs, this time I'm using 30. Um, I don't know that it will make any difference whatsoever, but it's just nice to know that I'm utilizing that disk a little bit more. So uh, I checked this over. Everything does look good. Um, and so we just hit enter there. And we can see that it completed creating that. Um, so really quickly, I'm going to go through and do that for C, D, and E as well. Now this time... I will have to change this to my other NVMe drive um, because I only want three OSDs running off of each of those uh, DB devices. So we change that to the 1N1, and I'll change my device to SDC, D, and then E. 
All right, guys, so that is all three of them finished. Um, we don't see that reflected here, but I'll go ahead and close my window here now. We can hit reload. And we can see all of those show up here now. And if we come to Ceph, we can see, whoa, I've got to move a lot of stuff around. Um, and it is basically just going to start filling this information. Basically, this is just stuff where it's like, hey, I've got way more space now. I need to rebalance my whole uh, cluster. And so it goes through that whole process. Now, theoretically, if I wanted to, I could... Um, wait until these were all the way down and then just do everything at the same time um but uh it's just not the way i've chosen to do it that may be better practice you put less stress on your drives because basically what has happened is i every time i do a block like this it kind of has to move around and redistribute all of the files so um, when it's uh, doing that on these ones it's redistributing them to these um, and then the next time um, when i take these ones in and out it'll you know have to move another massive amount of data around so you know, really, um, would it have been better to maybe wait on that until these are all out? Possibly. Um, certainly maybe less wear and tear on your device. But I kind of wanted to show you guys the whole process start to finish without having to take three days to do it. So uh, here we are. Um, anyways, guys, I think that's going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I do have one more coming down the pipe where I uh, purchased a couple of data center grade 1.6 terabyte PCI Express NVMe drives that I'm going to be dropping in here. Um, as we can see right now, I did have all uh, SATA or, or um, SAS uh, hard disk drives. Um, and uh, I, I do want to get some fast storage on here. And basically my plan is is these OSDs will be for, um, you know, kind of archival or, or that worm type use to read once uh, or write once, read many. Um, and then the NVMe devices is what I'm going to use for actually running the, you know, operating system hard drive off of and, and all of that other stuff when I need a little bit more performance. So it'll be interesting to see how that performs in the back end. So be on the lookout for that if you guys are interested in this. Um, if you haven't already, please smash that thumbs up button for me. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when my next great video comes out.